Good, happy Tuesday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First step, search to resume Tuesday for missing canoeer. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Jean Mackin. <laughs> Strict attention to detail. That's what the construction equipment apart. It's how we maximize performance, increase strength, and give you the dependability you demand. We engineer our equipment precisely at every level. It's what makes us a leader. Now get financing as low as 0% APR for up to 60 months. See your local Kubota construction equipment dealer today. Shelly, just heartbreaking for both families. We're told the family of that young officer is with him in the hospital. They say he's in critical condition with head trauma. And the mother of the woman still missing says she just wants her daughter home. It was her first trip to Cycle River. That's the first time. But she did have a little fear of water. The mother of 38-year-old Jennifer Bousquet says her daughter was canoeing with her boyfriend, Brian Day, both from South Berwick, Maine, along with his friend, Wayne Demers, from Summersworth, New Hampshire. Their two canoes flipped on the Saco River Saturday afternoon. The men made it to shore. Jennifer disappeared downriver. Brian got stuck in the, in the logs and everything. And Jen just kept going down water in the canoe with her knee until he couldn't see it anymore. And then she was gone. The main warden service says Jennifer was not wearing a life jacket and that this is now considered a recovery mission. The river conditions are treacherous at best. It, there's a lot of current. There's a lot of debris. There are some places that we can't search, but we're searching every place that we think if she was moving down river that she would come into an eddy. Two Freiburg police officers were hurt responding to the call. Their police boat struck a tree. It was the first day of boat training for 20-year-old Nathan Desjardins. His family says he suffered intensive head trauma. Officer Dale Stout was released from the hospital. Searchers say they now have one goal, bring Jennifer home to her family. I just wish, I just wish she'd come home and I know it's not gonna happen. But even if they find her, at least I will be here with me. And tonight, the main warden service says they did have to stop searching, but they will return to the river in the morning. Live in the studio, Gene Mack and WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Uh. Pedestrian killed in crash in Boston's South End. Let's take a listen to this video from WCVB Boston. Why do friends send their friends to Lamoureux for? A no-hassle shopping experience. Get the vehicle you want at the payment you can afford. Like this 2017 Fusion with up to $46.50 in rebates or 0% for 72 months, plus up to $2,500 in rebates. The weekend ends in tragedy here in the South End. Shortly uh, before uh, 10.30, police confirming, as you say, that the pedestrian who was struck here has died. Now, this happened shortly after 8 o'clock tonight. And behind us, you can still see the accident reconstruction squad on the scene here. The car with the taillights on is the one involved. Now, this happened in the 500 block of Tremont Street at the corner with Union Park, just outside of Steffi's Restaurant. <laughs> police confirming that the victim is an adult male. And while they're not saying if the man was on the cross, Crosswalk. Witnesses tell us that he was on that crosswalk. They say he was young in his 20s and that he appeared to be walking home with some takeout food when he was struck. The driver of a blue Honda stayed on scene and is being interviewed by police. The victim was transported to the hospital. Police confirming a little over two hours later that he has died. Now, this happened during a rainy, dreary night here in Boston South End. At this point, police are not saying if the weather was a factor. In the meantime, a three-block stretch of Tremont Street between Clarendon and Upton Streets remains close to traffic. And there you go on that report.
our Rundell man shot, killed in armed confrontation with police. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. And be less filling. Because we believe that if you compromise on taste, you can taste the compromise. Miller Lite. Hold true. Around 2.15 Monday morning, police respond... Okay, we're very sorry about that technical video of that report. Sorry about that going little technical difficulties. Police say a man was shot and killed following an armed standoff with sheriff's deputies early Monday morning. Officers have identified the man as 37-year-old Chad Dialon. The deputies included our Stephen and he has been with the sheriff's office for 18 years and means has been with the sheriff's office for about two years. Police responded to the home in the area of Old Alfred Road near Route 111 around 2.15 a.m. for reports of a domestic dispute. Investigators were seen coming and going from the home, collecting evidence throughout the day. The York County Sheriff's Office and Maine Attorney General's Office are investigating the shooting. Then, no opposition threats. Country won't pay Goldman Sachs two point eight billion bond deal. The leader of Venzo National Assembly has threatened that. A later government may refuse to pay $2.8 billion in bonds that Goldman Sachs recently purchased for the country's central bank. Texas state lawmakers say he received racist calls after house floor scuffle. A Texas lawmaker said his office received racist phone calls on Monday evening just hours after a fight broke out on a floor of the state house of Rucker representatives. And that does it for the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Tuesday. See you back here later on today. Bye, everyone.